boyfriend, and we had a huge fight. Oh. He thought he was in reverse, I guess. Uh-oh. <clears throat> and I went, what an idiot. <laughs> We're live now. Yeah. Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Richmond, Texas. I am Susie Aber. I'm the rector here, and we have several announcements today. Um, Lenten Madness is coming, and you may recall what that means. It means the saints are going to be paired up, and it's time to get online and read about them and make your vote. Uh, so be sure and cast your vote and uh, show your participation from St. Mark's for Lenten Madness. Um, just a reminder that today is the day we bury the Alleluias uh, mm -hmm. so that in Lent we will no longer be singing Alleluia. Uh, th and, but then, and especially all those kids, kingdom kids, they are going to be setting aside their Alleluias, hiding them until Easter comes. So you'll notice we're going to be singing lots of Alleluias today throughout our service. Um, this Tuesday, we're going to still have a way to celebrate Shrove Tuesday together, 6 p.m. Zoom. The link is already in the newsletter from last Wednesday that you got. We will send it out again. Be sure to log in and wave and say hello to all your friends and church members. Show us what you're cooking and eating. We'll have a few games like who has the largest spatula, things like that. I'm sure we'll have some music, and I know we're gonna have the story of the king cake, because uh, somebody in our church is baking it from scratch and they're gonna tell us about it. That's 6 p.m. show Tuesday, this Tuesday. Of course, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday uh, of this week, and obviously we're having a big storm that's coming through tomorrow and Tuesday. Lamar CISD has already announced they're going to be closed tomorrow and Tuesday. How we're going to decide whether we're going to have worship here in the sanctuary will be based on whether the Lamar School District decides to close. If they decide it's too dangerous to have school to be out on the roads, then we also will not have Ash Wednesday services here in the sanctuary. But I wanted to point out to you what we do have. It's way over here. We will have these for folks on Ash Wednesday who are uncomfortable coming all the way up to me to receive uh, ashes. Uh, it's going to be, uh, it's uh, ashes uh, on a piece of paper towel. Remember you are dust and to dust you, can, you shall return. You just reach in and it's like a tattoo transfer. Uh, have the sign of the cross in ashes on your forehead. So uh, if we don't have Ash Wednesday, uh, here in the church, we will have these still here next Sunday. And if you do come and you need feel like you need to keep your distance and not come close, these will also be available then. Uh, services at 7, at noon, and 7 p.m. Right. Um, okay. Let us worship God.
be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless thy dear kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The first lesson for today comes from 2 Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and you, as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. 
Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended into the whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when you could, he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> the psalm appointed for today is from Psalm 50, and we will respond by half verse. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has, he has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause. For God himself is judge. The second lesson comes from 2 Corinthians. If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Joseph, Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ.
God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. The thunder and lightning was a bit frightening, uh, kind of startling Friday night, if you remember. Uh, have you ever seen lightning strike with no warning at all? When I was a kid, my family and I were, were visiting Rocky Mountain National Park and lightning struck on a sunny day. We were up on Trail Ridge Road, which is a paved road with the highest elevation in North America sitting in our car, eating lunch together, when nearby, out on an overlook, packed with sightseers, seers taking pictures on a sunny day, kapow! The boom and the flash were simultaneous. People shouted and they, they ran back, on the ba back to their cars from the overlook, arms over their heads, babbling things like, I felt it, I felt it, but nobody was hurt. I imagine Peter feeling this kind of babbling terror when we hear him saying, let's build shelters here for everybody. As he looks at Isaiah, I mean, Elijah, Moses, and Jesus talking together, and Jesus' garments are shining whiter than white. It was an astounding, unnerving experience for the disciples, and they are not to speak of it as they go back down from this mountain back to walking with Jesus and watching him heal and teach. What does this transfiguration of Jesus up on a mountain mean? Why does Jesus shine so and why are Elijah and Moses there? Just before this passage, Jesus has told his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. This is when Peter rebukes him for saying so, and then Jesus strongly rebukes Peter for resisting such an idea, saying, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus also tells those who would follow him that they will suffer. He says they will need to take up their cross and follow him. Roman soldiers forced those who were to be executed to carry their cross pieces to the site of their crucifixions. This instruction, take up your cross, would certainly have rung true to the very first readers of Mark's gospel who were being persecuted for their faith and who had to live in secrecy. Suffering for one's faith was the reality for the followers of Jesus. Jesus takes three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, apart to the top of this mountain where he is transfigured. His clothes become dazzling, dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And then the disciples also see Moses, the founder of Israel, and Elijah, the prophetic restorer, talking with Jesus. The disciples are terrified, and Peter starts talking about building a dwelling for each one. He doesn't know what to say. Then a cloud forms and the voice of God speaks. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. These are the words spoken at Jesus' baptism with this addition. Listen to him. Then just as suddenly all this glory subsides and only Jesus is there with them. He orders them not to tell anyone until the son of man has risen from the dead. And they come down the mountain into Jesus' ministry. It is necessary that Jesus must suffer and die. That is what the whiter than white means. Seeing Jesus robed in dazzling white like a vindicated martyr, like someone who has died and who is now in glory with Elijah and Moses, is a way of God telling them this. Jesus will be martyred. He will suffer a violent death. He will suffer an early death because the whiter than white garments are a clear reference to those who have died for their faith in God. Martyrs are represented in white garments a number of times in the Old Testament. They go up the mountain, Jesus with the three he has chosen. They see Jesus transform. His clothing is beyond earthly white. It's a celestial heavenly white. 
and they see him speaking with Moses, whose face was transformed and glowing when he came down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments. And they see him speaking with Elijah, who was swept up into heaven on a chariot of fire. Peter wants to do something, get busy in his terror. He also doesn't want Jesus to die. It's as if he's saying, let's just, let's just stay here. But they didn't stay there. They come down from the mountaintop. The terrifying glory ends and they come back. Do you remember being on some sort of mountaintop fearful of what might happen next? Have we had times when we've been terrified and God has spoken and stilled us and gotten our attention? They might have occurred at a bedside in a hospital, at some life transition, a dangerous moment, a significant loss, or maybe confronting a frightening responsibility. I know that my stepmother had some frightening mountaintop experiences as my father's caregiver when he was in hospice care at home. Those times when we have been shaken into stillness, pushed to be still and listen to God, when, ex when we experience the transforming power of God in our lives. We cannot stay there on those mountaintop moments. They're terrifying, it's hard. And that's a good thing. Any more than we can stay here in worship for the rest of our lives. We have work to do. We have lives to live. We have promises to keep. When Dr. Nathan Jennings teaches his litur liturgy class at Seminary of the Southwest in Austin, he teaches that when we are in worship, when we join together in Eucharist with angels and archangels singing, holy, 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 we are there in the fuller presence of God with the saints. But with the benediction and the charge, we leave worship. We return to the lives we are living. We go back to our lives, into that waiting, that attitude of anticipation. But when we die, when we join God and God's saints, there is no benediction. There is no ending. The worship and praise will not end, but are endless. Today is the last Sunday of Epiphany. We're given the transfiguration today, and in fact, every year, this last Sunday in Epiphany, in which Jesus' identity as the Son of God, beloved, but with a path of suffering and death ahead of, and resurrection ahead of him, is made very, very clear. This is God's Son, and we are to listen to him. My father died at home nine years and four days ago. He had struggled with his health for a couple of years and his death was a release in a number of ways. He believed in the resurrection and in his latter years, he had the unnerving habit of asking waitresses who were standing there with a the notepad and ready to take his order, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? To visit him, in the last few years before his death was often to have to submit to an impromptu hymn sing and devotional time. I think that his illness stripped him away his caution with people, not that he had much caution to, be, caution to begin with. It laid bare what was important to him and he said what was on his mind and that included his faith as well as other things. His faith was something that he clung to as he became weaker and more frail. The transfiguration of Jesus conveys to his disciples that he would suffer and then be raised in glory. Those white garments, whiter than human hands could make them, represent martyrs' garments. Martyrs who were raised directly into the presence of God from death. Keep in mind that in the context of Mark, those very first readers of this gospel, they were facing martyrdom for their faith. And the Romans were crucifying those they saw as a threat. Keeping their community and faith secret was critical. Now, we obviously are not supposed to keep our faith secret, but share the good news of Christ, our faith experiences with others. While we are unlikely to be called to be martyrs for our faith here in the United States, there are other ways we suffer for our faith. Nevertheless, as we turn toward land and practice listening to God more closely, we can rejoice that Jesus is raised in glory 
and know that shining garments await us as well. May we be given the strength, the fortitude, and the persistence of Elisha to continue to follow our, our God and to be able to say to others, I felt it. I have felt the presence of God in my life. And Christ, I believe that Christ is present in my suffering, our suffering, our joy. And that as Christ is raised from the dead, so we shall be raised from the dead and be with him in glory. Let us stand and affirm what we believe using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 8 in our bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of a virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and that his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> The prayers of the people, Form 6. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our, our families, families, friends, and neighbors, and, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For, for all who work for justice, justice freedom, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the, the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Andy, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for Jean, for Jerry, for Sandy, for Mary, for Kim, for Deborah, for Amy, for Keith, for Ashley, for Jim, hear us, Lord, for your mercy, mercy is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for this quiet time we will be spending at home uh, during the winter weather. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise, and praise your, your name, name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who, who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. 
O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. you. Peace be with peace. you. Peace be with 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 you. We have an important birthday today, <laughs> and that is Tom. It is Tom's birthday this week. So, come on. Come on now. <laughs> Here we go. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Tom as he begins another year. Grant that he may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We also have two anniversaries, two anniversaries to celebrate this week in our, our church. Roger and Sandy and John and Evelyn. So let us pray, uh, pray for these two couples. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may continue to love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience and wisdom and true godliness that their homes may continue to be havens of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And of course, we continue to pray for all those that we are, are distant from during this time, for reasons of safety, uh, for those absent from us. Um, the Lord be with you. And also with you. O oh God, whose fatherly care reaches to the uttermost parts of the earth, we humbly beseech you graciously to behold and bless those whom we love now absent from us. Defend them from all dangers of soul and body and grant that both they and we, drawing nearer to you, may be bound together by your love and the communion of your Holy Spirit and in the fellowship of your saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also and with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful <coughs> thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us all so that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him. And the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. <laughs> Gift. 
to God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.
Take care.